Good evening and welcome to MTV's news update for today, Tuesday, February 7, 2017. In the news tonight, Economist predicts dark days for Guyana. Crossdresser finally allowed in court after arriving in male clothing. Barbie's man succumbs after ingesting poison. And in court, 18-year-old claims he steals to support his pregnant girlfriend. With the details of these and other stories, I am Ashley Scotland. Thank you for joining us. Outspoken economist Raymond Gaskin predicts a gloomy future for Guyana's economy. Let's find out the reason for such a calculation. Judging the economy from its current position, economist Raymond Gaskin says the future looks grim as the government is heavily depending on two sectors whilst neglecting the traditional ones. Expressing his discontent, Gaskin stated that the government is awaiting the production of oil, a resource that the opposition leader Barrett Jagdio warned it could decimate the economy under the coalition government. It looks to me like what the government is banking on oil and gold, and the government has very scant regard for rice and sugar. And if, um, if that does take place, we're in for a lot of problems in this country. If the rice industry goes down and the sugar industry, and then we depend on this gold and, gold and oil. Gaskin claimed that if the government continues their heavy dependence on oil, Despite production is scheduled to begin until 2020, they will allow other sectors that contribute to the economy to falter. He noted that rice and sugar, two of the major contributors to the economy, are being sidelined by the government. Already, the Guyana Sugar Corporation, Gaisuku, is scaling down operations with Wales and LBI already being permanently closed. Scaldon Factory is also set to be diversified, while plans are in the pipeline for Rose Hall to be divested. There is also ongoing discussions between government, opposition and other stakeholders for a decision to be made on the future of the sugar industry. In relation to rice, the price per bag is still unfeasible according to farmers. Government has also increased the price for land rental and the drainage and irrigation in Region 5, compounding the rice woes. The opposition party has also time and again chided the Granger government for the state of the economy. Opposition leader Barrett Jagdio believes that gross incompetence and negligence is responsible for the alleged decline in economy. He had stated that the various taxation measures will devastate the economy while affirming that the PPP will reverse all the taxes when they secure victory at the 2020 elections. Godfrey Brooms MTV News Update. The Ghana Police Force is seeking the assistance of members of the public in identifying a male who died in an accident in Canal No. 1, West Coast Demerara, on February 1, 2017. The body is presently at West Demerara Regional Hospital Mortuary. More news still ahead, to stay tuned. Our nation needs safe and wholesome foods. So food importers, follow these guidelines. Obtain a permit to import food from the government analyst food and drug department, which is renewable annually at $20,000. All food items imported must be accompanied with the following documents, a free sale or export health certificate, a certificate of analysis, and a commercial invoice. Food must be stored in bonds that are adequately lit and ventilated. Food must be stored at least 18 inches from walls and 6 inches off the ground. Sanitation, pest control and distribution records must be kept and maintained. Food must have at least 75% of their shelf life at the time of importation. Food labels must be in English and a list of ingredients, expiry date and the country of origin must be clearly stated. A message from the Government Analyst Food and Drug Department.
what I really love about Qualfin is that, you know, every day I get to come to work, um, I interact with my peers, and we have fun working towards one common goal of being the best BPO and making people's lives better. Before Qualfin, I was working as a sales representative at an insurance company when a friend told me that Qualfin's Better for Acting branch was hiring. At Qualfin, I get to work and study, which helps me along my path to becoming a successful human resource manager. One of the benefits of Qualfin will definitely be the Qualfin University. I've always wanted to study computer science and I'm having the opportunity to do so right now. A friend told me about the opening at Qualfin. I applied since I was up for the new challenge. I love working at Qualfin because of the friendly and relaxing atmosphere. It helps me to be myself. The Bushlot Burbies resident, who chopped both his estranged wife and her new lover on Sunday while in a drunken state, succumbed hours after he ingested a poisonous substance. Lashana Gomes Cornelius has been following that story. Narayan Parmalu, a 50 year old member of the community of policing group of Bushlot Quarantine Burbies, who over the weekend brazenly chopped both his estranged wife and her new partner, died late yesterday afternoon after he had consumed a quantity of an unknown substance moments after committing the Grizzly Act. According to updated police reports, Nisha Permalu, 48, the estranged wife of the now-dead perpetrator, while her injuries were significant, has been released from the New Amsterdam Public Hospital after her condition improved. Her new partner, Mahindra, called Brakup, was also released from the hospital, bearing a chopped arm, face, and head. The injured woman related that on the day of the horrific attack, it was not the only occasion on which she, along with her new boyfriend, had visited Permalu's home regarding her eldest child. The mother of three further indicated that the reason behind her departure of the home of Permalu was due solely to his abusive ways. Permalu, she related, had two other wives before her, whom he had all abused and threatened regularly. It was during December last that Nisha Permalu moved out of her matrimonial home of 17 years to live with her boyfriend, Mahendra. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. A 56-year-old man is now dead after his head was reportedly crushed by a car. Here is more from Cassandra Knott. A 21-year-old man is now in police custody after he reportedly crushed a man's head by driving over him. The horrific accident occurred last evening at Adventure Public Road, Essequibo. Commander of G Division, Parseran, confirmed today that the victim was lying on the corner of the road when the incident occurred. What we have confirmed so far, mm -hmm. uh, the individual was lying on the roadway. Right? Okay, and it's not the main public road. This is an access road in a, in um, the eastern side of the Adventure Public Road. Mm -hmm. um, the car, the motor car, was proceeding east into that access road, and as he was negotiating a left turn mm -hmm. into a cross street, mm -hmm. uh, he felt a bump mm -hmm. on the road. He stopped, came out where he observed this individual was lying on the corner just by the edge of the road. Mm -hmm. Um, at the time, he was bleeding through his nose, so he, he and an horses from within the area, they picked him up, yeah. took him to Saudi Hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. The commander also noted that the said victim was under the influence of alcohol at the time of the incident. Okay. Our investigation uh, indicates so far, at the time, the place was dark. There's no uh, building in the immediate area. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a fence with high bushes very close to the roadway, mm -hmm. which definitely would have obscured the driver's vision if he was turning okay. or seeing anything on the road. Yeah. Um, and from his relatives, he was an alcoholic. Okay. Um, from the, the investigator that went to the scene, actually, found the alcohol bottle right next to him. Okay, so he was so drunk he appears at the time. to have been drunk at the time and was lying on the road. Meanwhile, according to Pauls Ram, the driver of the vehicle tested negative for alcohol. However, he is still in police custody assisting with investigations. 
Reporting from TV's news update, I am Cassandra Norton. A police officer is now in custody after he shot a man who he claimed attacked him with a hatchet. The police say that the officer in question was on his way to Georgetown from Burbies when he felt sleepy around 23 hours 30 last evening and decided to stop at Fairfield to rest. He was subsequently awoken by a knock on his window, after which he lowered the glass. His alleged assailant questioned his presence before allegedly removing the key from the ignition. The police claimed that it was when the rank tried to retrieve it, the victim drew a hatchet. Before he could use the weapon, the officer grabbed his service revolver and discharged two rounds, hitting him to the left ankle. The spent shells and the hatchet were recovered and are lodged with the police. Coming up, cross-dresser allowed into court after complying to dress as a male, and Sophia family receives death threats. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals do you have a business idea and don't know where to start do you have a small business that has been stagnated and not growing iPad can provide finance for as much as 20 million dollars for you to acquire equipment tools machinery and stocks to start or expand your business iPad can also provide mentoring and training for you to improve your business skills marketing and record keeping iPad improving livelihoods get going keep growing with iPad Step in to A&M Collections located on Regent Street next door to DM Beauty World and try our unique and trendy styles in the latest ladies and men's footwear. A&M Collections located on Regent Street next door to DM Beauty World is open 8.30 to 6 p.m. daily. Step in to A&M Collections and step out in style. Tell a neighbor, tell a friend, it's Breeze Money Machine time again. Yes, you and your friend will have a chance to grab big cash in the Breeze Money Machine promotion. Just submit one 375 gram or larger Breeze packet or proof of purchase of Breeze liquid 900 gram or larger for a chance to win. Yes, you heard it. Just one packet to enter the Breeze Money Machine promotion. Entry boxes are located countrywide and all courts outlets. Promotion ends March 24, 2017. Breeze, unbeatable stain removal. The news continues on MTV. Following the continuous denial of entry of transgenders to courtrooms, they were today finally granted access. This came after the victim in a court case complied by dressing as a male as instructed by the presiding magistrate. After two separate cases of rejection, a transgender woman was able to face the court without any retaliation from presiding magistrate Dallon Bess. Appearing before the magistrate's court was Ronald Trotman, called Patronella, the alleged victim of physical assault by a known acquaintance. The virtual complainant appeared before the said court on two previous occasions dressed in female attire, but was denied entry to the courtroom by Magistrate Bess, who refused to address the case. Prior to the third occasion, Magistrate Bess had instructed the VC to dress in a pants and shirt without any earrings, as he only identifies with two genders male and female. The victim, who made the third appearance, was seen dressed in pants, shirt and a slick back ponytail. The accused abuser was granted a reduced bail of $40,000 and was asked to return to court on February 27, 2016. He was also asked to appear every Monday at the Brickdown Police Station. Meanwhile, Managing Director Sassad Joel Simpson lauded the court for its oversight in allowing transgender to enter the courtroom. We see that we saw like a number of transgender women, both um, people who was um, dressed in a, in a skirt suit and others who were um, practically dressed in a new sex way with earrings, with makeup and so on, were allowed to act into the court. On previous occasions last year, they weren't even allowed to enter the courtroom. So that's a step in the right direction. 
Simpson explained the letter was written to Chancellor of the Judiciary, Carl Singh complaining about the repeated actions by Magistrate Bess. In the letter, the organization has requested access to courtrooms to be granted to transgenders. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. A Safaya family is now faced with death threats following a fire which decimated their small cottage nine days ago, believed to be done by an arsonist. According to head of the household, Yannet Roberts, the suspected arsonist made several death threats against her, which were delivered to her two known persons. The suspect is still on the run after he allegedly set his former partner's house on fire on January 7. However, a second report has been made to the Turkine police station for the threats. Well, actually, the first um, he sent to say that um, burning the house was just a start. That it finishes when um, he killed me. So I went there and I make a report about it. And then um, the other day, the woman said she saw him in Pleasant. And he said that his money spent in the house. His money spent on the house. So he have a right to burn it. So um, that was it. While the suspect is yet to be captured, Roberts claim he was seen last week in Sapphire, but is said to be presently in Pleasant. The suspect, who is now in hiding, was said to be in a relationship with Roberts for a number of years, but had separated two weeks prior to the incident. The ten persons who are now homeless are forced to lodge at various relatives as police investigations continue. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Mayor of Linden, Carwin Holland, is calling for more government institutions to be established in a mining town to foster development. Speaking exclusively with News Update, Linden's Mayor Carwin Holland said that Linden is the center of other villages, thus the need for more government institutions. There are other services that we need, such as the birth registration office. Um, the, the, we, need, we need the GRO to have um, an office in Linden as well. We have the passport office, and I commend government for that. But we need lots of other services in Linden because... He claimed that, that such establishments could only spell well for the entire nation. He affirmed that the institutions must not be centralized in Georgetown, as persons across the country must have equal access to quality public service. We'll be providing service not only to Lindeners. We have to consider Mabaruma, the riverine areas. We have to consider um, uh, Bart Bartika, well not Bartika, the Madia and all of these areas, Mobura, uh, Letem, we can think of these areas that we can provide major services to. And one time Linden's health care was the best in this country. And we need to get back to providing the best of services um, in Linden to better service our, our nation. Specific to the Gold Board, Holland made it clear that it should be government's priority to install a Gold Board in the mining town since the precious minerals pass through there. Yes, I'll renew a call for um, an arm of the gold board to be in Linden. If not an arm of the gold board, I would love for one of these uh, investors, gold miners or someone who, who's purchasing gold or so on, to invest in setting up a shop in Linden. I think it's strategic. I think um, it will only be to their benefit. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Still to come, gastro outbreak under control and water wars being addressed by GWI. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. 
Mashramani in Valentine's is here and Sino Mall has all you need from gorgeously decorated bed sheets to kids towels plus and regular size women's clothing. Come in today and enjoy super low prices on attractive coach bags for any occasion, clutch purses, sexy lingerie for Valentine's, a variety of slippers at a price no one can beat. Hats and sunglasses are at giveaway prices. Our prices are low for the things you love. So visit Sino Mall at 16 Crow Street, Georgetown or call 231-8200 or 613-7939. Nothing compares to the class and beauty of Beeson windows and doors. Engineered by professionals and built to last longer than the competition. Buy 10 windows and get one 24 by 16 bathroom window absolutely free. No tricks, no gimmicks, and no hidden fees. Prices starting from 13.5 VAT inclusive. So visit our showroom today at lot 1228 New Eccles Industrial Site or BPAC's building on Regent Street and save big on UPVC or aluminum windows. To order now, call 622 Four one nine seven or two two six one two nine two. You're still with news update. Welcome back. The gastroenteritis outbreak, which plagued Region 9 over the past few weeks, is said to be under control, with no new reported cases. This was confirmed by this newscast by the region's chairman. Chairman of the Regional Democratic Council, Brian Alicock says a medical team has been dispatched to deal with the outbreak in the region. As such, no new cases have surfaced within the past weeks as residents in the affected villages were educated on safety precaution measures. Yeah, the thing is, um, it's under control. We have not uh, increased in cases. Uh, it's, uh, I don't think we have any cases at the moment. According to the chair, with the distribution of jerry cans from the Guyana Water Inc., Persons will now be able to access clean chlorine-treated water from drilled wells. The region, which has been plagued with the stomach flu since last month, has seen well over 50 confirmed cases. But the drilled wells, that is where they get no water from now to put in in jerry cans, as well as we treated the wells with um, the tablets, the chlorine tablets. In 2013, there was an outbreak of the illness in the Northwest District, where a total of 529 residents from Port Kaituma were infected while three deaths were reported. Also, 90 cases were confirmed in the Barmita district with one reported death last year. The occurrence of gastroenteritis is seasonal, with the highest incident occurring in December, January, February and March. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Following the concerns raised by Region 7 official about the shortage of drugs in the region, the Ministry of Public Health has swiftly responded ensuring that the region's health sector representatives receive their supplies to treat several ailments including hypertension, diabetes, malaria, asthma and other types of physical distresses. More drugs will be distributed later this week according to the Ministry. Following the release of several pornographic videos involving school students, the Ghana Responsible Parenthood Association says there is a dire need for sex education to be taught in schools. Pornographic videos of students of several secondary schools in Georgetown have gone viral on social media during the past week. It is against this backdrop that the Ghana Responsible Parenthood Association Program Director Shilwana Providence disclosed to this newscast during a phone interview that the association will not be investigating the issue but will instead advocate for some justice to be done. The intention of investigating, we think that the fact that the videos are out there um, and, you know, okay. there are faces on the videos. So we think we leave the investigation and, and, and the, the charging, as you, as you would put it, up to you know, the police and, and the, the criminal justice system. Okay. Uh, what we will do is that we will advocate for some amount of, um, some amount of, of justice mm -hmm. um, to be served as it relates to persons circulating the videos, persons who are taking the videos. Yeah. Uh, we have heard reports also of, of adults yeah. um, forcing children in some of the videos. Providence related also that some of the girls in the videos are said to be under the influence of drugs and that GRPA will pressure the authorities to ensure that who is responsible be charged. 
However, it was noted that the association is more concerned with responding to the issue through education and awareness. But what we are more concerned with right now, Cassandra, is responding to what is happening. Um, we have scheduled sessions in schools, in several of the schools. Okay. Um, we plan to do sessions with the young ladies. We plan to do sessions with the young men and then do sessions with them all together. Yeah. Um, as you know, there are limitations to what we are allowed to do in schools yeah. as it relates to um, condom use, mm -hmm. as it relates to safe sex. Mm -hmm. The ministry has continuously asked that we use an abstinence-only approach. Okay. There are some parents who also prefer that we use an abstinence-only approach, mm -hmm. but we would also like to tackle this from a realistic um, point of view. Mm -hmm. And so we are now thinking of strategies for, for doing that in the schools. GRPO says that they will continue to push the education ministry as well as the health ministry to have a comprehensive approach to sex education in schools where the young people will be able to access resources and information that will allow them to have safe sex if they are sexually active. Young people are able to access resources okay. and information that allows them, if they are having sex, to have safe sex. Um, we are not advocating for young people to engage in sexual activity, but we are advocating for them to practice safe sex if they do choose to do so. One of the things that have been brought to our attention is that in some of the videos, the girls have explicitly expressed their preference to not use condoms. Mm -hmm. They have indicated that they wanted to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Um, and in some cases, there was no conversation about condoms. Okay. And, you know, that can just make a bad situation worse. Since there are no counseling done in schools, this as well as comprehensive sex education will be offered by the GRPA to schools, particularly to help those who are involved in the pornographic videos. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Cassandra Knott. Communities on the East Coast and East Bank of Demerara were over the weekend affected by the stoppage of water from the Guyana Water Incorporated. However, GWI related that the issues have been rectified but they are still monitoring it. Following a host of interruptions in the flow of water across communities on the East Coast of Demerara and the East Bank of Demerara, Operational Director of the Guyana Water Authority, Dwayne Sheko, Related to news update that the untimely interruptions were solely due to operations malfunction within the water systems at both locations. Regarding the complete halt in the flow of water at Melanie, which occurred over the past weekend, this newscast was informed that the issue stemmed from an electrical power surge which caused multiple damages to a few cables belonging to the Guyana Power and Light Company that leads to the pump station located at Bachelor's Adventure. The damaged cables are said to have since been fixed. With regards to the constant interruption in the flow of water along the Grove Diamond area, News Update was informed that the reason was as a result of a damaged motor located at the Grove Pump Station. The Operations Department of GWI relayed that a damaged motor has since been replaced. The department noted while most interruptions are due to power outages, others are caused due to the high demand for water during certain periods throughout the day. To help ease this situation for both the Diamond and Grove communities, the department indicated that in just a few months from now, a brand new pump station will be constructed at Diamond, while the Grove pump station will be expanded to accommodate the high demand for water in that community. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Curlinius. Court rung up with Cassandra Knott is after the break. Do stay tuned. Hey, you have a growing flesh there, and there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague, ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. SlimJet presenting Coliomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh free skin, guarantee. Just apply Coliomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick and painless. Stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Coliomac. 
only at the Slim Jet, City Mall, second floor, or in New Amsterdam, 22 Asylum and Main Road, Berbis. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. What I really love about Qualfin is that, you know, every day I get to come to work, um, I interact with my peers, and we have fun working towards one common goal of being the best BPO and making people's lives better. Before Qualfin, I was working as a sales representative at an insurance company when a friend told me that Qualfin's Better for Acting branch was hiring. At Qualfin, I get to work and study, which helps me along my path to becoming a successful human resource manager. One of the benefits of Qualcomm will definitely be the Qualcomm University. I've always wanted to study computer science and I'm having the opportunity to do so right now. A friend told me about the opening at Qualcomm. I applied since I was up for the new challenge. I love working at Qualcomm because of the friendly and relaxing atmosphere. It helps me to be myself. George and Street Courts on Tuesday, February 7, 2017. Robert Ben, who allegedly shot and killed a man and also injured his girlfriend, was today committed to stand trial at the High Court. Ben of Tocqueville, Georgetown, is accused of slaying Colin Fierro, who he reportedly riddled with bullets on his driveway. Today, after the trial ended, Magistrate Dallin Best told Ben that he is to stand trial at the High Court after there is compelling evidence against him. The magistrate noted that after reviewing the police's evidence, he is satisfied that it was the accused that inflicted the deadly injuries to Ferreira. He also noted that Ben admitted to the police that he indeed discharged several wrongs to the vehicle of Ferreira. His case is scheduled to begin during the next High Court sitting in April. Meanwhile, Inshan Ali was today placed on $400,000 bail after he faced the court for possession of arms. The 20-year-old, who is said to be a student of the Esequibo Technical Institute, was charged after the police allegedly caught him with 4.32 rounds of ammunition without being a holder of a firearm license. During his appearance today before Magistrate Laren Daly, Ali pled not guilty to the charge before his attorney requested bail on his behalf. According to the attorney, the said ammunition belongs to a relative of Ali, who reportedly died five years ago. 
He further noted that the ammunition was found in a lot, which consists of the accused home along with two other houses. As such, Ali was granted $400,000 bail and was ordered to return to court on February 13th. Finally, a teen today pled guilty to a simple larceny charge. Rickford Marcus, 18 years, was slapped with a simple larceny charge, which stated that he on January 7 robbed Ricardo Mahabir of one cellular phone valued $150,000, along with other articles valued $43,000. When the teen faced the court, he did not hesitate to plead guilty. He explained to the court that his girlfriend is pregnant and he is unemployed, which resulted in him stealing. However, Marcus was remanded and the matter has been adjourned to February 28, where the 18-year-old will be sentenced. Reporting from TV's Court Roundup for Tuesday, February 7, 2017, I am Cassandra Knott. That sums up our newscast for the night, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Economist predicts dark days for Guyana. Cross-dresser finally allowed in court after arriving in male clothing. Burbies man succumbs after ingesting poison. And in court, 18-year-old claims he steals to support his pregnant girlfriend. Here's a reminder that the newscast can be viewed online on our MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Additionally, a rebroadcast can be seen later tonight at 23 hours and 6 hours 30 on Wednesday, February 8. On behalf of our news team, I am Ashley Scotland, thanking you for watching. Good night.